So let's start with some uh, introductions. So we have uh, Rima. Hi, everybody. I'm Rima Antel from Red Hat. I'm here to represent telecommunications technology, uh, where I've spent all of my career from Verizon to now being a chief telco architect here at Red Hat. And I've lived through the whole transition from plain old telephone service to now moving into 6G. And uh, Marlo? Hi, I'm Marla Weston. I'm a cloud software architect over at Intel, and I'm also a CNCF Environmental Sustainability Tag Chair. I've worked in many places, including firmware, HPC tooling, security software, kernel drivers, MLOps, and Kubernetes cloud software. And now I'm working both on performance and sustainability in the cloud. I enjoy gardening, playing with hardware, and exercises involving adrenaline. Uh, Tammy? Hi, everyone. I'm Tammy McClellan. I'm a cloud solution architect at Microsoft. I'm also the chair of the oversight committee for the Green Software Foundation, and I co-chair the community working group. I also have a small farm in Michigan where I grow flowers, herbs, and veggies sustainably and share them with my local community. And uh, Nikki. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Nikki Manolidaki. I'm a software engineer at Grafana Labs. Uh, I'm a lead in the uh, CNCF Environmental Sustainability Tag, uh, where I co-chair the brand new Green Reviews Working Group. Uh, I've been organizing grassroots for many years, and I live in a natural park. So. <laughs> So let's start with a question for the, for the audience. And so um, how many of you know how much power it takes to run your software? Like, can anyone raise their hand or make a noise or something to, like, if you know how much power you're, like, you actually take? And uh, so with that, um, so, let's, so let's jump into the, into the first question. Like, how much power does, like, how, how do we determine this and how, and how much power does our software take? So let's start with, uh, with Nikki. It's a very difficult question to answer. How much, uh, what is the carbon footprint of our software? It's a question we're trying to answer in the sustainability tag. Um, to give you a high level example, the average estimated carbon footprint of conference attendees is equivalent to uh, servers running AI workloads, 10 servers running AI workloads for uh, four days at full capacity. Uh, so, you know, measuring and reducing the energy and carbon footprints of our software is it's not a very widespread practice yet, uh, but this is changing and we are seeing momentum around this. Okay, and uh, why, uh, why does sustainability matter? Uh, it, so, yeah. Uh, also in the key. <laughs> we, need to find, um, we need to find solutions to preserve the world around us. We are very close to exceeding the 1.5 degrees Celsius of, of uh, tipping point. Uh, and we have already exceeded this 1.5 degrees tipping point in certain regions. Um, it is scary to think about it, I know, um, but we need stubborn optimism. Uh, to create spaces, uh, find solutions, empower each other, uh, and create change as a community. And I think as engineers, we understand stubborn optimism because when, uh, when uh, we're stuck, we iterate, uh, we, we, we continuously find solutions to problems. Um, so I think uh, in the CNCF, by uh, innovating in the open, as a community, we can drive change, and together we can uh, save all that we can save. And uh, Tammy? Sure. I think um, at least now we can all agree sustainability matters. Um, the, the fighting about that is, has seemed to assist, but being aware of how much carbon is being spent and taking steps to improve those numbers can make a giant impact. Uh, in one case, after identifying the amount of carbon the solution spent, 
Uh, we were able to reduce it by 45% with just right-sizing the VMs where the software runs. Uh, Marlo? So we should also be looking at how to save on power. Um, data centers use 1% to 2% of the world's power and are estimated to consume 1,000 kilowatts per square meter, or the average of 10 American homes. And this is before we started adding power-hungry XPUs. I know we call them GPUs, but I call them XPUs. And the back-end networking required for the systems. With preliminary testing, multiple people have shown that there can be a 20 to 30% savings on power without powering down the systems. For large data centers, or even cases where there are many edge systems, saving 20 to 30% on power is a huge savings financially. We can move, more, we can move the more workloads sorry, where proximity does not matter to places where power is cheap, both environmentally and monetarily, as long as the cost to transport the data for the workload does not exceed the power savings in the transfer. And that, Rima? Um, so as you can tell, awareness of climate change and of our impact on the environment is growing. And the world governments are recognizing that and taking actions. They're defining targets for greenhouse gas emissions. And also, um, they are adapting sustainability reporting regulations which would allow us to figure out how much individual companies are, are contributing to greenhouse gas emissions. And energy consumption uh, is biggest contributor to greenhouse gas emissions. Energy supply sector is responsible for about a third of all the world emissions. Energy supply companies are responsible for 30%, while telecom companies are consuming up to 3% of all the power by humanity. If we add to that other parts of the information and communication technology sector, like data centers, um, equipment manufacturer, computer, uh, consumer electronics. And some projections show that we are consuming, gonna consume up to 9,000 terawatt hours by 2030. That's roughly equivalent to 800 billion average US households. Electricity also is responsible or accounts for up to 8% of carriers' revenues. Some are paying upwards of a billion dollars a year in power bills. That's a huge financial burden. On top of that, some countries are simply running out of available power. So regulations, mandatory reporting, Carbon credits where companies can create offset projects or pay for their pollution are all meant to mitigate our sustainability problems. But I think we can still do more. So what available tooling is there in Kubernetes to, to help with this? Uh, let's start with Tammy. Sure. So uh, the SCI, which stands for Software Carbon Intensity, uh, was created by the Green Software Foundation. And it's a standard for measuring carbon in software. And it's um, in its final stages of being approved for, as an ISO standard. So we can use it to measure Kubernetes clusters and also any workloads. It really takes a holistic approach to software, uh, which includes not only the software where it's running, uh, but the region in where it's running and the hardware it's running on. So being able to measure so uh, carbon in software is super critical uh, as it allows us to analyze the data and experiment with reductions, which drives efficiency. Uh, Nikki? So actually, we are using the SCI um, as a leading principle in some of the work that we do in the CNCF sustainability tag. 
I really liked um, Marlowe's model that she mentioned, um, that the Green Software Foundation you know, specifies what uh, to measure, and in the CNCF tag, we show how to do this in the, using cloud-native tooling. Um, and but yeah, we, we recently created the Green Reviews Working Group, um, which is the, the first technical project of the tag. Uh, and our goal is to collaborate with CNCF projects, uh, with the maintainers, to gather the energy and carbon uh, footprint of, of the project and assess their sustainability and find ways to improve this. So for energy monitoring, we're using Kepler. Uh, Kepler is an eBPF-based energy monitoring tool, which recently became a CNCF sandbox uh, project and uh, volunteers are needed for the working group. Uh, you can join us on, on Slack. Uh, we have some of the links in the resources in the QR code behind us. Come talk to us during the tag meeting, uh, which is in about an hour from now, and uh, join the meetings, maybe, maybe contribute or learn with us. Uh, Rima? Sure. Uh, so there are tools that can be applied in the context of a Kubernetes cluster, but I wanted to talk first about what we can do at the level of individual nodes. Um, an idle server already draws 50 to 70% of its peak utilization power without even doing anything. And in an active server, CPU is one of the largest contributors to power consumption. So we can start at the level of the individual node by, being, uh, by introducing things like uh, liquid cooling or being very judicious about the hardware components. We can select and size them to the actual expected loads. And then we can use uh, modern workload-aware CPUs uh, and then on top of that, apply software tunings using tools like node tuning operator or Kubernetes power manager to manipulate the actual settings of the individual cores to minimize their power impact. So you can uh, adjust things like uncore frequencies, C states for levels of idle sleep, P states for voltage frequency controls. And it all might not sound as a big deal, but uh, we've already shown that you can reduce power consumption by 30% utilizing these tools, even for very performance intensive workloads. And uh, Marla? So the other piece that you need to look at is where your workloads are landing. So schedulers are where the workloads help determine where the workloads land when scheduled. Landing on the correct node with the correct number of available resources, that's critical, um, in preventing a waste of resources. One CNCF supported scheduling project is KEDA, which is graduate, in graduated status as of August, which is great. Um, it's also known as Kubernetes event-driven auto-scaling. A carbon-aware KEDA operator was released in April um, as an example, and demonstrates carbon intensity data from third-party sources to adjust the scaling behaviors. There's also a new concept of intent-driven orchestration, which is specific to looking at the properties of desired of the resources instead of specific resources, and scheduling accordingly with that information. This space, as I see it, has a huge potential going forward for helping optimize placement, both within classic data centers and on the edge. So which organizations and projects are leading the way for environmental sustainability in the world of uh, cloud native? And let's start with uh, Tammy. Sure. Uh, the Green Software Foundation was formed under the Linux Foundation with the mis mission to create a, a trusted ecosystem of people, standards, toolings, and best practices for building green software. So, Organizations with a shared commitment to sustainability and an interest in green software development principles are encouraged to join the foundation to help grow uh, the field of green software engineering. 
contribute to the standards uh, for the industry, and then work together to reduce the carbon emission of, of software. Uh, Microsoft is leveraging the foundation by working with other companies to build a sustainable future by embedding sustainability into their organizations and partnering with industry lead leaders around the globe. Uh, Marla? I am most involved within the CNCF environmental sustainability tag as a chair. Um, there are also the chairs Max Korbacher and Leonard Palk. We have a large community and there's a lot of knowledge of tooling there, so please do come show up. We have multiple working groups, including our new green reviews. Um, so talk to Nikki about it. And uh, Rima? Uh, there are certain uh, initiatives you can get involved with in the telco space as well. Uh, some of them is Next Generation Mobile Networks Green Future Network Project. Uh, you can also contribute to open RAN Alliance sustainability use cases or get involved in ITF sustainability insights. So, uh, Marlo, can you um, close this up? Or? Yeah, please do get involved. Feel free to visit us. We're all on Slack. Um, we'll be wandering around or come join our meetings with our various organizations. Thank you so much for listening. Um, we're very excited to be here and speak about this subject because it's fairly important. Um. Fantastic. Well, a round of applause, everyone. <laughs>